are some devices you use every day that work by sending radio waves? Uh, a radio? TV and Wi-Fi too, I think. Yes, yes, and yes, but there are lots more. Let's take a minute and write a list in your notebooks. <laughs> Guys, guess what Reese calls her stuffed bunny? Mr. Snookums hugs a lot. <laughs> You were almost saved by the bell. Why did I have to pick such an embarrassing name for that rabbit? At least the note didn't land on Mr. Manzano's desk. Now that would have been a disaster. Miss Hopper, Miss Easley, I'll see you after school. Your flight has been grounded, and you're on cleanup crew. This gross gum gunk will not come off my nails. Ew, detention is bad enough, but scraping ancient gum globs from under the desks? That's going too far. So, have you figured out what went wrong with their airplane? Nope. As usual, our design was flawless. Ugh, no matter how perfect they are, paper airplanes are just too unpredictable. We could just stop sending notes. You know, just wait till class is over to talk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What if there's an emergency and I need to get a message to you ASAP? Stop. Super quick. What kind of emergency? Let's see. Have you forgotten last year's famous phys ed fiasco? <laughs> That's what happens when you forget your gym shorts. My point is, unexpected stuff comes up, so we need a reliable way to send notes. So, speaking of unexpected stuff... Kaylee! Reese! I'm so glad you picked up. I have an air-resistible invitation for you. Join us at Confetti's annual flying machine fair. Witness the unveiling of Professor Seymour's Airship 1000. So, are you guys in? You had us at air, resistible. Presenting the Airship 1000. It's air amazing. Thank you. I could never choose favorites among my inventions, but I do confess I have a soft spot for my flying machines. I rarely get them right on the first try. But there's nothing I love more than a challenge. And when you're working with wind speed and air currents, there are challenges galore. We know a little something about that. Well, look at that. Our little dev caterpillar has transformed into a crabby butterfly. Aw, give dev a break. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for the getup. My mom volunteered me to be the flying machine mascot this year. Oh, mothers, they mean so well. But I had to wear my little sister's old Halloween costume because the mascot costume went missing. Did it, um, disappear into thin air? Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard! The Airship 1000 is about to take its maiden voyage. Are you afraid of heights? No, not heights. Reese and I just had a, uh, well, humiliating experience with an unpredictable airborne vessel today. We're a little edgy. Professor, how can you be sure that once we get into the air, we won't just get blown off course? Oh, I can assure you that this airship has a set of extremely reliable controllers. The rudder controls the steering, and these bags filled with air control whether the airship goes up or down. Who knew air had such power? I've just been using it for breathing. Indeed. Since air is heavier than the helium we use to inflate the balloon, we can add air to weigh us down and let some air out to go higher. Too bad our paper airplane didn't have a controller like this. A controller? That's it. Thanks, Professor. You just solved our pesky plane problem. My pleasure. Now, how about that ride? And then Mr. Manzano unfairly gave us gum scraping duty. 
There isn't a nail polish on the planet that can cover up this damage. But the good news is, we figured out how to solve the problem. Our airplane just needs some kind of controller so we can steer it. Or you could stop passing notes in class. Oh, these airplanes are for very important things only. Like reminding Kaylee it's read to a dog day at the library. Controls, huh? Something like this? Yes! A radio control! We can steer the plane the way Seymour steered the airship, only with radio waves instead of helium. Won't the motor and antenna weigh down the airplane? Just factor that into the design. Come on, I'll show you.